أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيبي إله العالمين سيدنا ونبينا وقائد مسيرتنا العبد المؤيد والرسول المسدد المصطفى الأمجد أبي القاسم محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المكرمين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا لا سيما سيدي ومولاي بقية الله في الأرضين واللعنة على أعدائهم أجمعين إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد قال الله تعالى في محكم كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واتبعوا ما تتلو الشياطين على ملك سليمان وما كفر سليمان ولكن الشياطين كفروا يعلمون الناس السحر وما أنزل على الملكين بباب لهاروت وماروت وما يعلمون من أحد حتى يقول إنما نحن فتنة فلا تكفر فيتعلمون منها ما يفرقون به بين المرء وزوجه وما هم بضارين من أحد إلا بإذن الله ويتعلمون ما يضرهم ولا ينفعهم صدق الله العلي العظيم In the name of Allah the gracious the most merciful May the peace and the blessings of the Almighty Allah Be with and amongst all the prophets and messengers Including the last and the beloved Muhammad and his honorable and dignified and purified progeny, respected brothers and sisters in Islam and humanity, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome back to another episode of your program, A Closer Look into the Glorious Book, where we have been by the grace of the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala able to explore the lives of many prophets mentioned in the Holy Quran beginning from the Prophet Adam and as we speak we are analyzing and examining the life of the Prophet Sulaiman Salamullahi Alayhi Solomon the Prophet Sulaiman is mentioned in many chapters of the Holy Quran we covered his remembrance and his mentioning in chapter 38 Surah Sad and in the previous episode, we started his analysis and examination of Ayah 102 in chapter 2, where it speaks of Sulaiman. And inshallah, tonight we will conclude the discussion of this verse 102 in chapter 2, Surah Al Baqarah. And then we will move on to discussing the story of the Prophet Sulaiman in chapter 27, Surah Al Nahl. Then discussing it in chapters in chapter twenty one Surah Al Anbiya and finally in chapter thirty four Surah Saba. Therefore, it is a long journey and it is an interesting journey, full of insight, full of knowledge, full of awareness, and full of beautiful stories. One of the stories that was spoken about is that how Sulaiman was tested by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala not once but several times. And how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the greatest kingdom to Sulaiman. And how Sulaiman alayhi, was so kind and merciful, not only to those whom he was ruling from human beings, but as well to the animals. And we stated that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in chapter 2, Surah Al-Baqarah came to answer some of the accusations of the Jews in the time of Rasulullah in Medina. 
on the issue of Rasulullah and the Holy Quran praising Sulaiman while Sulaiman to them did not deserve praise and was not worthy of their respect. Why? Because they thought that Sulaiman's kingdom was achieved through magic. They thought Sulaiman's kingdom was achieved through witchcraft. Why? Because Sulaiman and Dawood both had, for example, mountains subservient to them. Uh, they had shayateen, the jinn working for them. They had employed, for example, certain animals and birds and pets. And they were subservient to them. So they thought that this was also another case of magic and witchcraft. They did not believe in him. And they accused him and his kingdom to be a um, result of a very powerful level of magic and witchcraft. They came to Rasulullah. They said, how can you praise this man when his entire kingdom was based on lies and magic? Na'udhu Billah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down verse 102 from chapter 2, Surah Al-Baqarah. And we spoke about the significance of Surah Al-Baqarah and the importance of Surah Al-Baqarah in the previous episode. وَاتَّبَعُوا The Jews followed مَا تَتْلُوا الشَّيَاطِينَ What the shayateen, what the wrongdoers, what the... Um, what those whom hated Sulaiman and his kingdom were spreading from rumors. Ala mulku Sulaiman in reference to the kingdom of Sulaiman. We spoke about all this. We spoke about Harut and Marut, the two angels that were teaching people how to counter the magic. And we said that Harut and Marut used magic in order to counter magic. When they taught magic to the children of Israel, to the Jews, the Jews used this magic in order to spell more people and spell more individuals. And I said that back then, being able to use magic in a powerful way meant power. People were scared of magicians. You have magic, people are scared of you. You don't have magic, you're weak in that society. Therefore, they went in Babylon to Harut and Marut, the two angels sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach them how to use magic. Now there is a question that rises that I did not answer. And that is, how do angels speak and teach human beings? Can angels and human beings communicate? There are two answers. First answer is yes, angels and human beings can communicate. Just like Jibra'il communicated with Rasulullah. Just like Azrael communicates with some human beings and he communicated with Sulaiman, inshallah will speak about the story. But the majority of the Mufassirin have suggested something else. They have stated that those two angels, Harut and Marut, came in, a form, in forms of human beings. Thus they were human beings. At, they looked like human beings, they acted like human beings, they did everything like human beings. Therefore, there was no difference between them and a regular human being. So they were teaching them on those bases. Harut and Marut. And the worst problem they had was that they were separating men and women. Husband and wives. How? by using the magic that Harut and Marut taught them. And this is happening until our time today. So I said two things. I said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran something very important. وَمَا يُعَلِّمَان مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا يَقُولَ إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ فِتْنَةِ فَلَا تَكْفُرُ all this is discussed. Now Allah says his statement. However, they won't be able to hurt anyone unless Allah wills, unless Allah gives the permission. And I said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects the mu'mineen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects the believers. Especially while they 
take the the uh, the means of protecting themselves, such as reciting Ayatul Kursi, such as giving Sadaqah, such as never forgetting the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, such as always remaining on wudu. Those issues will always protect us from such difficulties. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He controls the universe. If a knife is meant to cut things, 99.99999 until sometimes that knife won't cut because Allah won't allow it. Ibrahim had a very sharp knife when he wanted to sacrifice Ismail. He threw it in the rock, it cut, it cut the rock open and went inside the rock. Then Ibrahim looked at the knife and said, you can cut a rock open. Why don't you cut the neck of my son? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then sent Ibrahim a statement. Ya Ibrahim, qad saddaqta ru'ya. Ibrahim, you've passed the test. Sometimes clouds are meant to rain. Allah says, don't rain. It won't rain. Sometimes fire is meant to burn, but Allah says to the fire of Rahim, don't burn, it won't burn. Sometimes lions are supposed to harm human beings, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected human beings from lions when He decided for the lions not to attack a human being. Such as the story of Al Imam Musa ibn Ja'far and Al Imam Al Hadi when they were placed in jail and they threw them with the lions and the lions did not harm them. And such as one of the very famous companions of Amir al-Mu'mineen salamullahi alayhi, when he was uh, left out in the desert with a lion and the lion was seen to come and sit next to him while he performed his salat al-layl. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here decides that I won't allow magic to harm the mu'mineen and the believers in me and I will stop the spell if they have a good relationship with me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also has provided us with prophets and imams in order to teach us and enlighten us and to take us from problems and to solve our difficulties. And I want to make it a point that brothers and sisters know that Ahlul Bayt have given us du'as to read if we have doubt. Maybe there's a spell on me. Maybe some people used magic. Maybe they used black magic. Maybe used... Read the du'as. The du'as are mentioned in Mafatih al-Junan written by Shaykh Abbas al-Qummi rahmatullahi alayhi where he gathered all the supplications. There is a supplication that you read that will take away magic from you. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us all from such evilness. Now I want to say, I want to speak about forms of magic. Sometimes there's form of magic that doesn't actually exist, such as the magic that the magicians used in the time of Musa. They say that the magicians in the time of Musa they tricked the people, but they did not have magic. They tricked the eyes of the, the, the viewers. That is why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent, that is why when uh, Musa put his cane down and the cane turned into a real scorpion, they ran away because they knew this was real. Theirs wasn't real. Another type of magic is when you actually, when what they say takes place, for example, turning a human being into an animal. Third type of magic is when they actually use, it's not real and it's, they have not affected the eyes of the viewers, but they may use um, certain, certain things that will um, that will uh, lead into individuals thinking that this is the way things are happening. 
for example, by using the cameras and by using la latest technologies. And this is the magic that we see in our time today. This is the types of magic. Now, what does Islam say about magic? Ma magic that harms people is definitely haram. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran states, it's kufr. And there's a lot of punishment. Now, to learn magic, to counter magic is halal. But as soon as you use it for your benefit, it becomes haram. Magic to destroy people and to destroy lives. But if you use a camera, for example, to amuse people, that is fine. This is the opinion of magic. Now, sometimes some people as well, they start becoming suspicious. They think everything is magic, and that is not the case. Not everything is magic as well. And finally, I want to speak about the history of magic. And every era, there was something that people used. For example, in our era, it is definitely technology. Computers, PDA, cell phones. If someone comes and creates something that is out of the ordinary, maybe a cell phone that can, that can for example, do something very unnatural, something that no one can think of, a camera or a, a computer that, for example, does something very uh, out of the ordinary. This, is, this would be a miracle of our time. Or, for example, a car that can fly thousands of miles. and This could be something that would shock people. Before, TVs shocked people. Microphones, cell phones shocked people. At the time of Moses, it was magic. At the time of Sulaiman, it was magic. At the time of Rasulullah, it was the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was uh, eloquence in writing and eloquence in poetry and eloquence in speaking. That is why Allah gave Musa magic, a magic-like miracle. In the time of Isa, it was cure, curing people from illnesses. It was medicine and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the best of cures to Isa. And the time of Rasulullah was eloquence and writing and speaking. And the time of Sulaiman and Musa and the children of Israel was magic. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the same method. In the end, I want to say that if we also want to propagate the religion of Allah, if we also want to make sure that we want to attract the youth towards Islam, we have to speak to a youth with their language. We have to speak to, speak to the labor workers, workers with their language. We have to speak with the professors and the educated with their language. We have to speak to the Westerners with their language. We have to speak to the people that live in the Eastern world with their language. We have to speak to a scholar with his language. We have to speak to people with their languages in order to propagate faith, in order for them to accept what we have to offer to them. In order for our words to be effective, and that is the message of Rasulullah. And that is, that is exactly how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam carried out propagating for the religion of Islam. In the end, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you all, make you one of the followers of the Prophet Sulaiman sallallahu alayhi And inshallah we will meet soon as we will be discussing the story of the Prophet Sulaiman further in other chapters of the Holy Quran. Wa akhru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يا ربي بالهاد النبي محمد الله هب لي شفاعته بيوم